Hello to you all and welcome. My name is Neil Skipper. I'm a senior educationist with RM and I've been here for 28 years. Uh, before that, I was a physics teacher. Uh, this session is entitled Teacher Productivity and Efficiency. And I'm going to be especially looking at how iPads can support this in your school. Uh, you're welcome to use your own devices or take notes for the session. Uh, to get the most of it, you'll need an iPad an or an iOS device, an iPhone, iPod Touch, etc. Uh, if you've got an Apple ID, then there will be an opportunity to log in to an iTunes U course. There are some iPads already set up, so you can join in. They all have the apps that we're going to look at throughout the whole session, so please do feel free to use them and get the most out of the session. Uh, there will be, as I say, an iTunes U course with links to all the apps and all the documents and uh, papers that I talk about. And if you don't have uh, access to an iTunes U course, then we'll be sending out a PDF with links to all of those materials. So please feel free to take photos or notes. Um, we're uh, on Twitter for this session, so you can get to, uh, to me at, at nskipper or use the at RM Education and hashtag RM Seminars to tweet us, and that would be fine, and uh, we'll make some progress. So, when we think about productivity, the words that come immediately to mind are efficiency, getting more work done, working quicker, working smarter, more output, more profit, if you're a business, more results, better results. Uh, in education, it's not always easy to measure the output uh, and most of the efforts are focused on increasing outcomes and uh, qualifications, more grades, more numbers of students through, and not really much about uh, the cost of uh, how that, that comes about. So, as you're well aware, uh, the workload of teachers has increased, and back in 2005, the Atkinson Report looked at um, the cost of education as opposed to the number of students through and produced some interesting results. But more recently, uh, we've had the, uh, the government response to the workload challenge in 2015, indicating that um, teachers were working incredibly long hours. Uh, and the recent OECD figures uh, indicate that UK teachers on average work 48 hours a week, with one in five working over 60 hours. So it is a problem, and that's uh, in fact on average 19% longer than any other country, um, certainly within Europe and uh, the US. So with all this in mind, is it possible to reduce the time spent on some activities whilst maintaining output levels? Um, it's not just a matter of, yes, making us more productive, we can get more work done in less time so that we can do more work. So my focus is specifically on how iPads can help and uh, as an Apple education trainer, I'm constantly working with schools to get the most from their Apple devices, be it iPads, Mac computers, although actually much of what I'm saying today will actually be used with any tablet device. So we think of productivity, we are thinking of not just classroom, but also use in administration. So we're thinking of this across the whole use of teachers and staff in the school. And there are many tasks that teachers have to do and uh, just a few of those um, are things they produce documents, schemes of work, assessments, presentations, agendas, letters and this is just a small list I'm sure you could think of many more uh, activities other than the ones here but basically what I'm trying to show here is that there are lots of things that we're involved with and we need to be able to be efficient and productive in the way we do this. So what, why am I suggesting we use an iPad for this? Why would an iPad be helpful for teaching in school? Well, it's got a number of advantages, and, and those are the fact that it's instant on, it's got access to a camera, a microphone, it's extremely portable, and we'll talk about the size of the device and what we're using um, in a few moments. Um, it has access to cloud, and that's, that's a really significant point, which I shall touch on later. But it also has access to all three of the major productivity suites, Microsoft, Google, and Apple suites, all run on iPads. Uh, it has access to the best range of apps. Uh, developers tend to uh, develop for iOS first and then other devices afterwards, and it is extremely secure. Um, it can be used uh, there's only one instance, I think, in the last uh, few years of uh, malware being found on an iOS device, and that was with a jailbroken device, so not a, a really uh, 
a reasonable test at all. So we're, we're safe and secure in using those devices. So the question now is, um, if we're going to use iPads, which one do we use? Which iOS device do we use? Would it be an iPod Touch, an iPad Mini, an iPad Air, uh, which is the ones that you've got with you uh, today on the table to use? Um, would it be an iPad Pro? And which size of those devices? And would we use iPhones? Um, and they are appropriate and often used by SLT. So, interestingly... Um, Size is a very important choice here, and uh, that has to do with partly with the portability of the device. Will it fit easily in your hand? And also the length of time that you can work on that device. So interestingly, uh, my iPhone here, my, my 6 Plus iPhone, um, has as much storage capacity and as much power as the iPad Pro. But I can tell you now that I can't work anywhere near as long on my phone, I, although I can do all the same tasks, I've got access to all the same apps, I can do virtually anything, but I cannot work for as long on a smaller screen. Working on a larger screen is always much more effective. In fact, there have been some studies on not uh, portable devices, but on uh, desktop systems. And it was found, uh, and I've, I've included these in the, the course notes and the, uh, the iTunes U course, that in fact, the optimum size is between 27 and 30 inches. Now, I know uh, you can have multiple monitors and that, that's always an option. Uh, multiple op monitors can be useful for particular tasks such as video editing or where you've got media on two different screens that you want to bring together. Uh, but they can often be a distraction because we're looking at something focusing on a task and we're distracted by another screen. So focusing on the right size is very, very important. So choosing the right device is really key and it comes down to is it the right size does it fit in your pocket in your bag or is it something that you want to have uh, access to in, in terms of a larger device now I've elected to uh, demonstrate here today using an iPad Air and an iPad Pro and I've got the 12.9 inch iPad Pro and that now has replaced my laptop for virtually everything I do. Uh, why Why would you choose the iPad Pro? Well partly it comes down to accessories um, and the size of the screen so I can work longer on that screen um, and the two accessories that are really key are the Apple Pencil and the Smart Keyboard and both of those turn this device into something more than just an iPad. And I will talk more about that in just a moment. Now, just before we do that, one of the things that the pencil allows us to do is it changes it from a laptop where we've got screens. I mean, how, how often have we sat in meetings? We're all sat with our laptops with the screen up and it can actually be quite divisive in a meeting because you're sat behind a screen. You're not engaging with the person. Uh, and one of the ways that I've worked is that I now hold my device in my hand as if it was a notepad and I use the Apple Pencil to write on that screen. So it has some advantages in that way. And one of the ways that it's become useful and one of the key things about the iPad Pro is the fact that it allows you to do a split screen. And one of the demonstration we're going to look at here is we can let's just start off with some notes and I'm going to use the Apple Pencil and uh, demonstrate uh, how we can use this and a nice feature of both the iPad Pro and the iPad Air 2 that you're working with is the fact that we can have a split screen so uh, I could just rub that uh, line out there um, so on the left hand side we've got our notes on the right hand side we've got a website that we're going to and we we're interested in so what can we do with this well we could just put in uh, first of all we could just type in so we get some seminar notes and how often have we been in this situation yeah we, we can we can do things like make that uh, make that bold and uh, and that's quite useful to be able to change the style of things. Um, but we've got a website over here. Uh, it'd be quite nice if we could copy stuff. So, yep, that, that frees up the possibility of going into here, selecting uh, all of that, that text. 
and just copy from here go over to my notes and I can paste straight into there so very easy to work with uh, pasting directly and we could paste images or whatever uh, we could also even put a link to the website uh, how often have we saved favorites and never gone back to them or bookmarks uh, so here we're using the extensions tab and we're going to use this quite a lot in uh, the sessions today so we can add this to notes and it prompts us how we can use this uh, and notes I'm going to talk more about um, as we move on through the presentation um, yeah I would like to choose this and I'm going to add it to my seminar note I'm going to say save that and as I do you can see the link appears on the left hand side so I now have here a link to that site and I can then go back to it at any point so it's quite useful that we would write notes um, what we might also want to do is of course we might want to add a photograph so we're going to just take a photograph uh, and I'm just going to take it of uh, the venue that I'm working in here and I'm going to use that photograph so now i have able to document my notes so if I was doing this with a student's work it's one place I've typed some notes I've put a link into some work or a site that they're using I've put in some uh, documentary evidence in a photo and what I might then like to do is actually to handwrite some notes and write something on here so now one of the big advantages of using this is I could just write notes on here and I could write it on there and if it was not just notes and you will notice I am leaning on the screen so just as I would lean on a piece of paper and draw and write I can do the same thing here even if I turn the pencil on its side I can shade and if I press harder it gets darker so it's responding to pressure and that's that's a very different way from the styluses that we've been used to um, with previous tablet devices so now yep I can share all of this when I'm done and I've finished I've got notes I've got links I've got photographs I can really work very well with this uh, the other thing that I can do is I can send this to somebody immediately so I could send a note via mail or any one of the other methods here and I could get the link to that and other people could see those notes so we're collaborating with notes it's not in just one place so there's a very effective way of using the device so the iPad Pro and the iPad Air 2 that you're working with enables us to use split screen so we can split screen in this way if I want to change app I just pull down from here and I can go to any other app that I've got and go back to here I want to change the other side I double click and I can then go to um, say keynote on this side and my slides on that side and um, so we've got our device we've chosen that according to is it the size of screen we want to work with is it the weight or size of device now the question is what are we going to do with it so we've got a range of devices we know what we're going to use how are we going to work with this well I've divided up the apps into functional groups and we'll touch on some all each of one of these um, I'm not going to go through every app on the list so you'll be glad to know uh, they are on the devices you've got so fee please feel free to try them out if you want to have a go during the session um, and also there are links in the iTunes U course and on the notes so you can have access to them afterwards you don't have to write them down so we begin by looking at uh, productivity suites and as I said the iPad supports all of the three major groups the Google Microsoft and iWork suite um, taking of notes is key and you've just seen using iOS notes that that can be done extremely easily we've also access to cloud sources so this has changed the way that we access things one of the real issues in the early days of the iPad was the fact that you couldn't get files onto and off of the device very easily the common way that we've all done with these devices is to email it to somebody so now no longer do we have to email it we can actually use the uh, the cloud to help us get around that uh, access to files is really important sharing files with students 
being able to share resources. We will look at some of the features there. Managing and scanning PDFs uh, is a big part of what uh, many of us do in education and therefore I'm going to touch on that and how we can use the iPad in that way. And finally we're going to look at some assessment tools for recording information. So let's begin by looking at productivity. Uh, so as I said we've got Office 365, we've got iWork and we've got the Google, uh, the, sorry the G Suite for education as it's known. Uh, there are other sessions where you can go and see each of these so I'm not going to uh, spend my time working through those I'm going to allow you to see the Google Suite uh, G Suite for Education in Mark House's session later today or at the Office 365 I'm sure one of my colleagues on the stand would happily talk to you about that but you can do all three on the one device and one of the key things that we can do is the sharing and collaboration of files so let's just have a look at how the iPad helps us with this. Now to do this I'm going to work on two devices so you will see now I'm going to bring up on the screen two screens so now we have the screen split so that on the left hand side I have my uh, student or teacher device, my colleague's device, and on the right hand side I have my iPad Pro. So here we're working and I'm going to open up an app of pages and uh, I'm going to work with an existing document that I have and we can specify this. Now if I go to my colleague's device I can be on the same file and if I tap on the screen you will see that the name will appear here we go Neil teacher has joined and as I tap on one I will see the name appear on the other side so I've got Neil teacher appearing in purple and I'm in blue on this one so if I type in Neil on here and if I type uh, RM on here then that appears on my other screen on the left hand side so we can see we're collaborating if I now go in and type some name on this side so I could type Fred from a school uh, then that will appear on my others. So we're now working with a collaborative or sharing document. So what I would like you to do in your session is actually to log in and start typing some details. So you can see that as people log in they will appear with a colour against them so we know which student is which. So there is no real chance of students abusing the system in this way in as they could write something inappropriate but you would know exactly who they are. Not only that, the system keeps an archive record of all the data and so you can go back at any point and find who's typed what and who's written what. Now I've got this set up so that we're sharing it. Um, in fact, if we go to the share options at the bottom here, we have uh, a link. So I've shared a link with all of uh, my... Sorry, we're just checking. I've shared a link here. Uh, and I can also look at the share options. So anyone with the link at the moment can edit the document. Anyone can make changes and I could change that so that they could view only um, or I could say only people I invite. So we could change the view option to only those people we invite. We could then put their email details in and they would get an invite to, to share that. Uh, so I'm going to cancel that and not change that at the moment. So we do have full control over access rights. We have an archiving so that we can check and see who's done what and we can actually uh, have control. Now, obviously the whole idea of sharing and collaboration changes the way we work. Normally when we send out, let's say, an email, we would have done an attachment. We would have attached a file and we'd have sent out, let's say, uh, an agenda for a meeting and it would have gone out to 105 staff, let's say, in the school and everybody would have got a copy. If we then amended that, we would send out another attachment and, and then 
those people would have all got that. Now, for a start, it's clogging up your email system, which is something that makes you slightly less productive in that way. Any amendments would have to be made to a file and then sent out, and people would have to be notified, which causes problems with the version control. We don't want to have that issue, and so what we can do now is just send out a link to a shared file. That link is a link to one file, it stays in one place, and we don't have the problem of if I do an update to it, everybody then has to get another copy. So it cuts down A on the number of files, but B, it also makes it much more effective in distributing information and keeping it up to date. Also, if you're working on a document together, uh, I've worked with a school in Hull where they were using it with sixth form English and they were sharing on a story. Each student was writing a passage about a particular element of the story and they were collaborating in that way. If you were working with a colleague on producing a large report or document, you could be doing a particular part, they could be doing a part, and you could both be working at the same time. Now what we're doing here is we're working with Pages app, so it's not through a browser. It's not, re re it's not dependent upon having a browser open and working it away, although it will actually work with a browser. Um, everybody who has an Apple ID has access to iCloud.com, which you can access through a PC, a Mac or a Chromebook. You go to a browser, you go to iCloud.com and you log in with your Apple ID. You would then see an online version of Pages, Numbers and Keynote and you would have access to sharing uh, just as we're doing here. So it works either through the app or it works through the browser. So you have both options and that really is a, a very uh, positive thing. Why would you use Pages over using something like Word or uh, Google Docs? Well, in the past I've used all three, and, and many schools do. Uh, they tend to use Google Docs because it's very good for sharing. Uh, they use Microsoft because it's the most common format of distributing documents, uh, certainly from uh, local and uh, government agencies. Uh, and then they use Pages. Well, Pages now does the sharing and it does open Word documents, etc. And it's also the best one for laying out and formatting. Uh, if I'm creating something like a newsletter, I would go to Pages every time because it's a much easier app to use. So that, that's why you would choose it. We can put the link into an iTunes U course. We could distribute it with uh, Apple Classroom or we could, in fact, uh, email it out to people or put a link in through uh, any other system. We could even use uh, Google Classroom to, uh, to distribute that link. So it does give us a lot of options uh, with collaborating with colleagues. Also, when we're sending out an email to a meeting now, we put a link into that email. We don't put the attachment. Uh, and this I'm working with schools in Hull where we're actually doing this and encouraging their admin staff now to send out links to documents rather than the actual document itself. So it does improve the way that we work. So we've moved on from that. I want now to look at the area of notes. Now we've already seen uh, iOS notes working and that works very effectively. Um, I've included the camera here because one way that schools are now documenting a great deal of work and assessment that students do is to take photographic evidence. So using the camera in association with notes or in association with the document is a very common way of documenting things so uh, I would urge you to use that if, if that's something you're not doing already. Now I've included two other apps in this section um, OneNote and Evernote. Evernote is a generic app that's available in the browser on any device and also obviously on the iPad but I'm going to look at uh, OneNote from Microsoft. Now OneNote uh, is part of the, the Office Suite and it's a, it's a free app that's available. Start at Newbury, we'll go to this page and we're starting with a blank page here. So we can give it a title, so we could say uh, Newbury Notes and we can put our notes in here and obviously we can, uh, we can type and paste in any notes. Uh, again, we can insert uh, information here so we can insert an image from the camera let's do our 
same kind of image again we take a photo we are going to use that and now it's got it in there one of the nice things about notes is I can resize that note so I can change the layout of it I can move it around the screen and change it in that way so there we have notes works very well uh, I can also insert an audio recording so here I can insert a recording and when I've finished I stop and then I can play back now this is an excellent opportunity to give audio feedback to students to their information or to their assessment and I'm working with a visual impaired unit in Hull where this is one of the things they really want to do because giving that audio feedback is an excellent way for them to feed that to students. Um, you can in fact see at the top here you can do a PDF printout so we can actually print out the whole thing or we could in fact draw on the screen so I could say yes I would like to make notes about uh, this particular part of the photo here I could write uh, some notes on there and I could use it in that way so it's an excellent idea I've actually got a special school Ganton special school uh, have been investigating this and they want to move ahead with using this to analyze and to uh, do their assessment for students just before we go on I'm going to show you what we were doing before with the website uh, and OneNote deals with this in a slightly different way same way as Evernote does I'm going to send this to OneNote I'm going to send this to the, the note or the folder that I'm working on here and I'm going to send that across and it appears on here and I get on my OneNote now not just the link to the page I now get the whole page copied across with the URL at the bottom of the screen so now if I want to document my website I can in fact go in and start writing and putting notes on there I can use highlighters so I can highlight a particular part of the screen I can change that and use it in a very effective way so really it becomes much more of a note-taking device in fact even if I'm drawing and I want it to um, recognize shapes so if I convert to shapes if I draw roughly uh, in fact let's use the pen if I draw roughly a circle it actually converts it if I draw something that's triangular or rectangular it works pretty well almost with everything that I do there we go so yeah it's picking up with a lot of useful tools that we would use uh, so I'm just going to show you a couple of examples really of how this has been used um, by uh, the school that I'm working with and here we have um, a note they've made they've got a tab for each student uh, they've got pages down here for each of the activities that they're assessing they've taken photographs they've put it into a common format and they've written notes underneath it even able to sign it and give it an assessment detail um, in fact we just move on and there's another one and here's an example where they've used a uh, line paper in, able, in order to write on so it can be very much like the way we would write notes the big advantage obviously with using uh, one note is the fact that the notes can be shared so we go to here I can copy the link as I did with um, with pages before but I can also invite people so if I want the head teacher to have access to this or a head of year or my head of subject everybody can see this and I have the option to say whether they can just edit or view as I did before so works very effectively in sharing in that way so I think you'll find OneNote gives us a lot of options I'm going to come back to talk about this um, this style of um, a recording uh, later when we come on to talk about um, Earwig it's which, uh, another product that we're looking at now we're going to move on now uh, and go back just there to cloud storage so one of the things that iPads have changed significantly in the last few years is the fact that now we have access to cloud storage and there are a lot of uh, opportunities for you to talk to companies and to us today about cloud storage so when you have 
uh, an iOS device and you have an Apple ID, you will get access to iCloud Drive. And we've seen you can share through the app, uh, you could share with other people and work in that way. And you have access to folders. Probably more commonly used are Microsoft OneDrive and SharePoint. Uh, you've also got access to Google Drive and I've included uh, generic uh, Dropbox which is becoming slightly less commonly used in schools nowadays and we're seeing much more of a move to Google and Microsoft. Now the whole idea of cloud services now means that I don't have to think about carrying around those USB memory sticks. Uh, I mean how many times have we forgotten the memory stick, we've left it in another computer, we've um, left it somewhere else, it's got corrupted as we've removed it from the device. I don't do memory sticks now. Uh, I've moved entirely to the cloud and all of my data has been moved across in one place or another. And so I'm accessing data in a much better and different way than I did before, which means that if I've got an internet connection, it's there and it's accessible. I can make it available offline if I particularly want to work on a file, but generally I'm accessing it via the internet. So I'm just going to briefly look at uh, SharePoint and OneDrive, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to look at, so I'm going to launch SharePoint. So this is Microsoft SharePoint, and it's actually linked into the school I'm working with in Hull, Ganton School. And we could see that they've got files that they've been working on recently. And if I click on Documents, this takes me to all of their SharePoint resources. So now I've got access to virtually anything. So if we looked at uh, pen portraits, for example, we can see they're split into classes. And if I go into classes, we can then see that it's divided up by dates and years. So they've got their information stored here. They specifically did this because, in fact, they are a split site and they wanted to work uh, on the files on both sites, but also it enables teachers, of course, to work at home. So they don't have to be in school working through this in order to get the work done. So they've moved all of their data. In fact, I'm working with a school currently who are working on moving all of their server data across to SharePoint, which means it's going to be available across the whole of the map, across two and more sites eventually. Uh, that means that they will all be able to access the same files and they won't need to link it into a server. And you won't need to run a virtual desktop situation in order to access it. So this really gives us an opportunity of moving away from those big storage systems where we've probably got files going back maybe 10, 15 years. We created a document that we might one day need, but we probably really don't. Um, so it does give you an opportunity to do a bit of housekeeping and to get rid of some of those files that you're not using. Uh, so it's, it's a good chance and a good opportunity. So that really does give you it. So that means it's available on any device. So I can do it on my PC, I can do it on my iPad, I could even have access to them on my phone as well. Uh, so really anywhere you are, you can do that. And that applies to any of the systems we're looking at here. For the cloud storage, I want to just touch on briefly looking at files and there are apps such as File Browser and Shobi that give us access to files in two slightly different ways. File Browser is one of a number of apps that allows us to link into existing computer systems. So I can go to File Browser and I can link into an existing connection and I get, so this would allow me to log on with my account details and all the files that I need to see I can access from there. So that gives us really powerful ways of connecting to existing systems and I can scan and see what's in the area and how I access files. So that gives us a great deal of scope for how we use devices. We can log in, we can see the files and we can move them across. And also I can set up my cloud services to move them into there. So if we really want access to those old resources on hard drives or servers, we can access them as well. So again, that is a big step forward in the way we use iPads now.
Now, Shobi is a sharing app, so Shobi allows us to share. So I'm again going to set up both devices I've got here, so we can see on the left-hand side I've got either a, uh, a student set up or another teacher and on the right hand side I've got set up here so I'm going to go into the same class now Shobi is quite nice because we don't need an email address we, we can use it but we can actually just set up a name so I can go into my science class here and I can go into the shared folder I go into it on both devices we can see the file is there I'm going to add a file uh, and well let's just do it with the camera because we've been using that already um, we're going to use that photo and now I'm going to make that available across and I can upload the file and um, we'll see that it uploads on my teacher's machine and uh, Mr Skipper has added an image and that means that on the the student side it appears and there we have the photo that was taken there so I can share files immediately the nice thing I can also do is I could write on here uh, so I can write some notes and I could fill in that I could do the same thing on files as a PDF and I could say okay that that's done and I've completed that now so that means that as soon as the teacher opens my version of that so I've now got uh, Neil Skipper student here and I open it and you can see the notes are written here as well now I'd like to write this back uh, so I can put some notes uh, on here I could give a mark uh, for the student and I could say that's completed and that then goes back and, and you can immediately see that the student gets the response and they see the work as well. So this is working with a number of apps. It works with Google Classroom, it works with iTunes U. We can do exactly the same kind of thing with iTunes U uh, as we can with Shobi. But it's a way of sharing that we're now becoming familiar with and using cloud services yet again. So that's our file sharing side of things. Um, we're going to just touch briefly on the resources. So resources now being cloud-based, things like iBooks, RM Books, RM Books where you can have a whole library of shared resources. And those resources can be in a, a library of books and students can go and withdraw a virtual book from the library and share it. The books can even be rented so you don't have to buy the book in school. Managing those resources is managing them through iTunes U to deliver courses as I've allocated to you and you can go on to that. The course, by the way, you don't have to, uh, in fact, uh, wait for me to enrol you on. It's an auto-enrol course, so as soon as you enter the course details, I'll give them to you in a moment, you'll be able to get on. Um, managing the resources in the classroom, uh, the Apple Classroom app now allows you to send a link to students, get them all using the same app, monitor every screen and see what they're doing, um, lock all the machines down, put them all onto using the same app, a whole raft of things. So using the iPads to manage these devices is what we traditionally have been used to using with desktop systems. So just going to look briefly at PDFs. And it's surprising in schools how many people use scanning. Now traditionally we've um, had to go to a machine with a scanner attached with the right software to scan that, uh, that document through and then once we've done that we would then make sure that the document was available in the right program. Now we can do this with an iPad and that really saves us a great deal of time and hassle. So I'm using two apps for this. I'm using Scanner Pro and PDF Expert. So I'm using Scanner Pro to scan a document. So we can either, uh, I'm going to delete this document I've done here. So two ways we can use this. One is I'm going to just add a document and you'll see it recognizes the document fairly accurately. 
uh, I can use that, I can save the selection and say, right, that's okay. If it's now scanned the document, so it's scanned it directly. And what I can now do is I can actually get it to recognize all of the text on that screen. So it's actually doing OCR. Um, I can now show that as text on here. So it's now recognized every word and shown it in the background. Uh, I could say, OK, that's done. Uh, I can now copy that text, paste it into a document, and I can move this document off into PDF Expert to use um, in part of the work I'm going to do. What we can also do with uh, the scanner app is I could say I'll delete that document. I don't really want to keep that for now. But the other way I can work is I can take existing photos. So if I've taken a photograph, a screenshot of a web page or a book, I could actually put that into here as well. So I could go to my documents. I could say I'm going to grab a, um, a page from a book that I've got here. And I'm going to say, yep, that's fine. It's now got the image from the book and I can now do my recognize text just as I did before. And it now scans. So yes, we would have to be careful what we're doing with, um, with copyright. But if we want to copy a paragraph out of a book as we would have done if we'd have typed it up, it saves us a huge amount of time in doing that. So we can copy all of that and paste it into our document. So scanning is now very possible on the iPad itself. Uh, if I go back to here, and I'm going to go to my folder. So one of the things that we do quite a lot with PDFs is we get exam questions, and we might want to take uh, something like this. We've got a whole series of questions on this particular physics paper uh, that we may want to take some of those questions and put them into an exam paper to give to students. Now, traditionally, we would have printed out the pages we want. We would have taken it to Reprographics. We would have asked them to make up the, uh, the number of copies we want, and then we'd have handed them out. Wouldn't it be much easier if I could say, well, here are all the pages. These are all the questions. I would actually like, uh, hang on, let's just go to this. I'm going to edit this and say, I'd like that question, that question, that question. And um, let's say that this question over here, and I want to extract that and save that as a test paper. Uh, so I can say that's done. Uh, so now I've got a PDF that only contains those questions. So if I go back to, to my result, yeah, there's my test paper. If I open that up, You'll see there's the first question I selected, there's the second, the third, and the fourth. And that's it. I've only got the four questions. That is all I want to do. And then, of course, I want to send it to students. So I could print it off, but it would be much easier to do an open in and do that as a PDF document and send that either iTunes U or using something like Shobi to send it to them directly. So if I chose Shobi, I could say, yes, I want to add that um, file, and I'm going to send that directly to my student, and they've got it, and they can use it in that way. So that is such a much simpler way of distributing information. Um, it does help us enormously in actually getting files out to students. We're not having to print it off. We're not having to worry about it. They can access it anywhere, anytime, and they can log in from home or from school and use it in that way. Now, that brings us on to the area of assessment. So let's just go back to our slides. And uh, there we are. We get on to the last topic, and that is one of assessment. So I'm just going to... Uh, work now with uh, an app called Earwig. Now Earwig are actually here, they're at the exhibition and uh, they'll be quite happy to, uh, to talk to you. Now if we uh, just, let's, uh, there are two ways of looking at Earwig. One is to do it through a browser and here we are. Uh, so we can log in through RM Unify 
um, and we can do it that way. So on the left hand screen I've got my iPad with the app from Earwig. On the right hand side I've got the browser version as we would get into it through um, Unify or directly logging on to Earwig itself. Uh, I've got my classes set up, I've got students within the class and here I have a particular uh, test student I'm going to look at. So let, let's look at uh, this particular one, Eleanor, here. I'm going to take a photograph and here I'm going to take a photograph and a very simple photograph. I'm going to make sure we can see that. I'm going to use that photo and now it says would I like to create a record. I'm going to, yep, I'm going to create my record. I'm just going to call it a simple test for our purposes here and then it says which class do I want to add it in. I'm going to choose class one. I'm going to choose um, Eleanor in this case. I'm going to go to next and then I can choose the subject I want to do it in. So I'm going to do it for um, computing and I might want to put uh, something like key stage three as a tag. When I do next I'm now working with this. I've got the option to do it internally only. I can email it to parents or I can send it to a blog editor. Uh, and I'm going to publish that to my records. Now that means that if I go to my student here uh, I can in fact refresh this screen and there we are the computing test is in fact there and there's my result and it's put in there for us. So that's a very easy way to do this. The nice thing about Earwig is that the images taken on the iPad don't remain on the iPad. They are just sent straight to the cloud for uploading the resources. So it means that you could even use a personal phone with the app on or a device that you don't want to keep the images on so there's no worry about keeping confidential data or images of students. So that's a much simpler way of doing it. I did include on here just a reference to Book Creator. Uh, Book Creator, you may wonder why I would include an app that creates books in an assessment session. Well, the reason why is that it can be used very effectively uh, to record information about students' work. Uh, I had a uh, food technology teacher who I was working with in Hull who created a book for every student and the book contained images and text about the work that the students had done. So there we are. Uh, using books is a very effective way of doing that kind of work. So the question is, what next? What are we going to do going through and away from this session today? Well, it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't just happen. You have to use the technology and your teachers have to use the technology. Do it in small steps. Take one of the things that we've talked about in this session and use that in a way to help them become more productive and more effective in using the technology. Share any experiences and ex expertise that you gain through working with that. Ensure that you have a program of continuous CPD. It may only be an hour once a month in after school session, but it does reinforce all of the messages you want to give through. And those messages really are part of your plan and your vision. Your vision is what drives all of this and any innovation through a school. Have that in mind. Keep that idea there and make sure that you use that to drive your experience through. Make sure you reflect back on anything that you've learnt and has this worked? Could we do this better? Whilst talking about CPD, uh, the APD or Apple Professional Development courses, um, RM being an educational expert for Apple, uh, provides one day free with every 50 iPads that you buy from us. If you buy 25, you do get a half day. Uh, those courses could be used against any one of them. There are links available, uh, and I've put those in your notes or in the materials, uh, but if you go to rm.com forward slash apple, you'll find a link to that information there. Uh, there is an opportunity to do an evaluation, and we'll come back 
to ask you to do that later. Um, how do you keep up to date with all of this and uh, keep going forward? Well, uh, Twitter is one of the ways that I use and, and is very effective because it, information gets pushed to you. Follow trusted sites and users on Twitter. If you want to follow me, I am a daily tweeter on uh, all things Apple and iPad. And uh, so you can follow me at, at nskipper. Um, I also curate a number of online magazines, one of which is a Flipboard magazine, and I've got maybe half a dozen magazines, uh, one of which is iPad in Education. How I keep up to date is I, I listen to podcasts quite regularly, and uh, one is Out of School, run by a couple of guys, an American called Bradley Chambers and a Scottish chap called uh, Fraser Spears, who was the first school to do a one-to-one -one iPad implementation. If you've got time and you think I could just do with listening to this, they've been doing this for four years now and they give you some really good advice. RM's education blog, there's a link to this, so it's rm.com forward slash blog. Go into our blog and find all the links to documents and information that I've put up here. So there you have it. Uh, in summary then, uh, you've got an option to move forward and be more productive in teaching and in the classroom and in administration. And that may be, uh, hopefully, through using iPads. So I hope I've given you some ideas today of how you might be able to achieve that. If you're interested in the iTunes U course, the enrolment code uh, is there, or you can point a QR code reader at the QR code here and get the uh, link to the course. If you don't, then there will be a PDF that we'll be sending out to schools with all the links in the slides. Thank you very much for attendance, and I hope you've enjoyed that, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much.